Well, I tend to usually start things off, I guess, so I'll, I'll just keep doing that. Awesome. Um, pirates. Pirates. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> how, you know, how did, how did you come about, you know, with the show, with the creation of it? What, what led you to creating Black Sails? Um, it, it felt like a genre that hadn't really been um, explored, certainly not in TV for a while. Um, and I, I think that was the initial sniff, I guess, that, 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 that drew Robert and I in this direction. Um, but it was really when we started doing research about it that, that it became clear um, what we had seen, um, which is essentially a, 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 um, a, a, this lineage of stories that all really comes from Treasure Island. It doesn't come from the history. Um, and, and Treasure Island, even in and of itself, is already um, a, uh, a, a, a little bit sanitized, but certainly a... Um, uh, a, a far more romantic um, version of that world um, and in some ways a bit of a cartoon um, it's a story for children and I think it's a great story for children but um, it everything else that came after that was 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 so terribly influenced by it um, we wanted to tell the other story we wanted to sort of dig past that and get into the reality of it and understand what it was like for these people to um, feel like when they woke up in the morning they had to take something from someone else in order to survive and um, right or wrong or whatever judgment you want to impose on it um, that's a desperate situation um, and certainly not as much fun I wouldn't think as as, um, as Errol Flint seems to be having when, when he's doing what he's doing um, and that wanted to be a show that, that felt like it was so many different things all on top of each other there they're a biker gang, they're a labor union, they're a startup company, they're all of these things all wrapped up into this, um, into a giant action movie. Um, and I think where, where it really took off was when we, I mean, the idea is fun, it doesn't mean anything um, to anybody else unless you can find people who are willing to pay for it right. um, and willing to um, contribute their expertise to it. And I think between Michael and stars, um, we we really lucked out. Um, we got both of those things, and um, and stars was they, they jumped in with both feet. They wanted to be able to tell this story um, in a fully realized, uncompromising way. Um, that means subject matter. That means action. That means scope. That means everything. Um, so at this point, we're just kind of hanging on for dear life and trying to uh, trying to do the best we can with the story. Well, I'm I, sorry. I, nope. uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about Anne Bonny and having female pirates on there, which I think is absolutely fascinating. And I'm, I'm curious because she, there was another female pirate. I'm wondering if she's going to show up on the show and some interesting stuff they're doing. Um, you know, I, I think um, what was interesting about about Anne Bonny to us um, is that she presents a very good opportunity to um, tell a story about um, how in this place. Part of um, part of a frontier story is about the social norms breaking down, about all of the things that um, are very rigid in London being a lot less rigid in in, in NASA. Um, and she um, was, um, you know, we don't know what she was. I mean, she um, was she homosexual? Was she bisexual? Was she, you know, how did she become this violent? Um, that's fun, you know. That 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 feels like a character I understand in in a, in a show like this. Um, and, and it was important to us that we engaged um, the female characters um, as much, if not even more so, than the male characters in terms of what their experience would be in this world and, and, and what it was like to be a woman there um, and to be expected to be one thing and then decide to be something else. Um, and, uh, and in that particular case, we got very lucky with the actress we found um, in Clara, who um, is just kind of won't stop surprising us by how amazing she is. So. In Tale of Pirates, you're also dealing with, you know, Nassau and the Bahamas and where, you know, piracy, you know, they all have to come into port at some time. Right. Can you talk about how much time we spend in port versus how much time is on the ships? What's the balance? Um, I would say in the first eight episodes, um, about half of them are at sea in, in, a, in a meaningful way, um, either going from here to there or taking something or big action or whatever. Um, it's a character. I mean, it has to be. This is what they did. So it, it, I don't know that you can fully tell this story without telling that story. Um, at the same time, I think we want to. Uh, we're very committed to NASA always being a place we want to come back to, um, and making sure that the emotional stakes and the emotional story happening on, on that island is um, is always as compelling as we can make it. 
you're working with Michael Bay on this show. Obviously, he is a powerhouse in yes. uh, in Hollywood, and also has a bit of a reputation. What's what's it been like working with him? Um, it has been. Uh, honest to God, it's been a dream. I mean, he's we have gotten the best of him um, in, in terms of the things that he does better than anybody in the world. Um, building the look of the show, um, sets, vis effects, uh, you know, uh, our crew that we hired, um, color. I mean, all of the things that, um, that, that there just isn't anybody better at. And he's also been really respectful um, of the story that Robert and I want to tell. Um, and so you, you get it all. You know, you get the freedom to tell a, a really gnarly story and, and you get the help to make a show that I don't know that there's any, you know, you could count on one hand the number of people in the world that, that could do what he's done for us. So it's been great. I'm trying to imagine what the casting call for the Pirates was like. So. <laughs> we saw some stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, um, it, you know, it, it part of you know you're, we're trying to upset expectations. So I think all, what we're always looking for is what you don't expect for it to be. Um, and and I think um, you know at the end of the day, what we're looking for is people that feel like people you want to spend time with. You know that in one way or another are are interesting or um, or you know they're they're human beings. You know? and, and I think um, we got very lucky with the ones we ended up with. So. About your reaction to finding out you got a second season before your first season aired. I mean, that has to be. That's weird, right? I know. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, I don't. I'm not counting on that happening again anytime soon. Um, I think you know some of it is um, you can only really shoot in Cape Town for part of the year, um, and the show is so complicated in terms of post and in terms of prep um, that we almost needed to do that in order to be able to keep our schedule. Um, but at the same time, and I think it, 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 you know, stars saw the reaction they were getting, and, and I think, which was kind of confirming their suspicion um, uh, that we have something here, um, and so it's nice, you know, it's nice that they were um, that they had that kind of faith in, in the product that they were willing to um, throw money at it and and to you know not just tell us they liked it, but to actually prove it. So speaking of uh, preparation. I'll what are the pirate consultants that you've had to find to like make the show? Um, we work very closely um, with a guy named Ben Little, um, who is an ex-Navy SEAL, um, and uh, left the Navy and started writing um, about this time period. And so everything that we... It, it was deliberate in the sense that everything we get from him is... is, um, it is it, it's part historical consultant, but it's also part tactical consultant. Um, we wanted to understand what somebody who has been trained to deal with this stuff, to swim up to ships and take them, and, and to um, to live in the water, and to um, and to do violence in the water when necessary. What that person thought about how these people lived, um, and it just it, it kind of imparts everything with them um, a, a, a real life experience that that hopefully translates through to the to what we're putting on the screen. What can we expect from the structure of the first season? Will it be episodic, character driven, or is there a plot that the first season will cover? It's um, it is, I think, as much as I would tolerate as an audience an eight-hour movie. Um, it's uh, there is episodic structure, um, but I think that ultimately um, it's very serialized, um, and uh, I think the, the 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 benefit of doing it in, in the environment we're doing it in with stars is that they were fully supportive of that. Um, so it's, you know, the, the story that starts on page one, really, um, is the story that will carry you through the whole, the whole first season. What's your biggest challenge shooting on pirate, I mean, obviously it's a set, but what's your biggest challenge shooting on those pirate ships? Um, uh, which, this is, how long do you have? I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> it's complicated. These things don't come with, uh, with an instruction manual. You know, you build these giant ships, um, and then you figure out what all the problems are. I mean, we, you know, these ships have sails. These sails, when they go up, catch wind, and then the ship wants to go, but you don't want it to go because it's <laughs> sitting on a gimbal. So, um, you know, there's a very narrow band of wind speeds we can shoot at when the sails are up. It's the stuff like that that um, we were all aware of, but that you don't fully appreciate how um, uh, challenging that can be to your schedule when you're, you're beholden to, um, you know, What's the wind speed today? In which way is it blowing? Um, it's 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 a deal, you know. I mean, I think there's a, there's there are a lot of good reasons why this show hasn't been made before, um, which honestly we're still figuring out. <laughs> um, but uh, you just got to decide. At some point, you just got to decide to do it, and 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 you have to 
um, have a lot of people who decide to do it with you. And hopefully we're all going to make it through the other side, I guess. What was the impetus for using Treasure Island as a jumping off point as opposed to just creating a show of, you know, Pirate Bob and his gnarly crew? I would watch the Pirate Bob show. <laughs> oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> um, I might be alone, though. I, I feel like at, at a certain point, you um, to make something this big, um, you kind of have to, and not only that, but to make something that um, is this intentionally um, designed to upset your expectations of something that you have an attachment to, um, I think you got to give people an entry point. Um, you have to give them something that they, they can wrap their heads around at the beginning. And, um, and like I said, I mean, I, I think Treasure Island is Treasure Island is the beginning of all of everything you've seen. There, are, it's all built out of that. And so it felt right that we're that story um, kind of gave rise to everything after it that we were going to go in the other direction and build it backwards um, and and try to link it up with. Um, the the historical material that that it was drawn from, so it, it just felt right.